What's up guys, I'm WeaselB Pro, and I'm going to be giving you a bit of a tutorial on how the background simulation works and everything you need to know in order to take an effective role in the background simulation. So, first things first, there are different states for all the different factions. There's 75,000 factions in the game. and so you pick your faction in this case we're just going to pick Tibbetts Alliance and there's different states for each faction so if we go over here to system status you go to status and then it's going to say reputation and then you want to go over one system status and right now you can see Tibbetts Alliance, Abbey Progressive Party, LHS yada 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 abby focus abby jets lft all these people are, are factions in this system so under each one you can see that it either says boom or none or right now everyone's in boom if we go in here it can tell you the current state obviously what the faction is all about um tibis alliance is a venturist faction and right now we are pending state civil unrest so our pending state is civil unrest and that means that people have been getting a lot of fines and possibly killing system security murdering clean npcs and also using the black market so if we wanted to hurt tibis alliance let's say we would go to the black market and we would flood it with a bunch of stuff that the station that's prohibited at the station and if you want to check that you go to your system map and in the system map if you go to the bottom you're going to see trade data and in the trade data at the bottom it says prohibited so all those things on that list nerve agents combat stabilizers narcotics bootleg liquor personal weapons landmines imperial slaves slaves so all those things if you sell those things at the black market it's going to add transactions towards civil unrest toward a bust and not a boom so when it comes to economic state you want to bring into the station commodity market aluminum polymers and synthetic fabrics for trade and you want to take out water purifiers um, bauxite food cartridges so obviously you can also do missions so when you use the commodity market you are only and do trade you're only going to help the faction that's in control of the station so Tibis at the top of the list here is the one who's in control of the station um, but keep in mind so if I wanted to help Tibis, I w wouldn't just have to do missions down here. I could also go and do trade. I could also go over to the contacts here and you could do, um, you can hand in bounties and you can also do search and rescue stuff. Um, I'm not too sure if material trading uh, counts towards influence for the controlling faction of a station. I don't think it does but i could be wrong um combat bonds are basically only for wartime because you're not going i mean you can hand in combat bonds here from other systems but then that's not going to count so if i was say in a war in a different system and i got a bunch of combat bonds in that system i couldn't then come to a different system and sell the bonds here and have them count for that faction in the war the system that's at war so if you get combat bonds in a system you have to sell them in that system at a station in that system for it to count towards the war effort in that system so just to be clear you sell combat bond contracts mostly during wartime in the system that they're collected in and when it comes to bounties if you're in a system and you're supporting a faction that is not in control 
you do not want to do bounties because if you hand in bounties you will be helping the faction that's in control so say you're supporting a faction that's not in control and you're at war with a faction that is in control if you go do bounties thinking you're going to help your faction and then you hand them in at the station where your opponents are in control you're helping your opponents so you have to make sure that you're running influence in the right direction basically so right now if i wanted to help say stand by okay if i wanted to help say abby focus i couldn't do trade or bounties I couldn't hand in trade bounties or exploration data at this station in order to help them. I would have to do missions for them and I would have to do influence focus missions. So you can go to the filter, pick influence, and then pick whatever has the most influence. So obviously these boom data deliveries would probably be pr pretty quick. One plus there for influence is probably not so good. So you probably would take the ones that are three and you would just run those and then you would eventually you would help Abby focus. So there's something called the tick. And so every day all the transactions you make, they all go into what the devs call buckets, I guess. And then all the transactions at the end of the day get all counted up and every 24 hours um, the tick updates and then all the work that you put in is going to be shown the next day kind of deal so it, it updates every single day around the same time and you'll see what changes your efforts have made so you ba when it comes to the economic state you basically you want to push influence in the most positive way you can and say you wanted to go into a system and you were up against someone who was in control of the main station and you wanted to cause civil unrest well then you would murder system security and others who are not wanted and you would also commit other crimes like even loitering on a pad gets you a fine crashing into other people coming in and out of the station will get you fines um just doing a whole bunch of stuff that gets you fines and you know causes mayhem you know murder and fines and all that stuff so that's going to cause civil unrest and then moving on to conflict states so in a conflict state you have war civil war and elections um, elections are a little more rare but war and civil war are pretty common so when it comes to war if you would like to win a war the best way is to hand in combat bonds so Every, trans every time you hand in a combat bond, it counts as a transaction. As far as I know, the amount of, of credits that you get when you hand in a transaction, when you hand in a combat bond, has nothing to do with the amount of influence. So if you hand in 10 1 million credit combat bonds, it's exactly this, it counts for exactly the same as 10 100,000 credit combat bonds. So, so basically, you want to make as many transactions as possible during a wartime or a civil war so that your the faction that you side with wins. I'm just gonna go jump into a, a combat place. Um, so this is a system that is at war and so we're gonna go pick a side and hand in some combat bonds. So once you're in a combat zone, no one is going to attack you unless someone jumped in on your wake, like a pirate or someone else, and they start attacking you. That's that's a different story. But if you jump in, no one's going to touch you. So you don't really have to move, but you can move just because you might take some, you might get hit with a random torpedo or something. Who knows? So before you join the fight, obviously you don't want to just jump in and start killing people you want to pick a side so you go to functions you choose which faction and like i said we're going to be choosing the faction that 
is not in power or is not in control. So we will take them. And you'll find all of a sudden all your enemies turn red on the radar. Um, let's pick one here. That's just an easy kill. This guy's going to be an easy kill. So as you can see, I got 9,200 credits for a bond. Now before I leave to go collect the bond, I want to show you guys something. So say I was going to go over here to attack this guy. If I was shooting at this guy and this guy who is on my team in the crossfire that's friendly fire and now all of a sudden as you can see on the radar everyone turned red there's still a couple green ones or yellow ones in there but that's only because they're off the radar and so they turn they turn a, a lighter color once they're a lot further away so right now I'm, I'm heading towards this green one so you can see that So you can see and as I got closer to the screen one, he went red too. So everyone now is an enemy because I friendly fired and so my own teammates turn against me. And so you, when, you, when you see everyone go red on your radar, it's because there was some friendly fire that happened. Maybe you were firing at someone that was really far away and, you know, bullets or whatever ammo takes a while to travel. So you know someone can fly in between you and your target at any point in time and if they were on your team you're going to attack them a, a couple bullets you know a little bit of ammo take if you're if just a little bit of friendly fire especially on a uh, friendly with shields isn't going to trigger everyone against you but if a bunch of fire on shields like you saw i locked on that guy and actually fired on him that's you know that triggered everyone to turn on me um if he if someone has no shields and they fly through your line of fire and they take just a couple you know hits that's gonna trigger it as well because they're gonna take damage from you so just a couple things that you probably want to know being in a combat zone and then so to deliver these i'm going to have to go to so there seems to be two stations in this system. And so I'm pretty sure you could go to either one to deliver the combat bonds. But you probably just want to go to the closest one. So I'm going to jump to Franklin Hub. So in order to win the war, your factions 
influence has to pass your opposing faction's influence by 15% in a in a war state or just 3% in a civil war state or election state. And then something that there's not too much to talk about, but there's another state called expansion. So basically in a state of expansion, your faction will be moving to a neighboring system within 20 light years and it will take over a spot. If the system you're moving into has less than five factions, you'll just kind of move in there and be added in. If it has more than five factions, you'll take over the spot of the faction that has the least amount of influence. And in order to trigger the expansion state, you have to get your faction to 75% influence or more and not be in any and not be in any state of war in any of the systems that your faction is in. So that's how you would expand your faction to new places. And then once you get to the station and land, then you just want to go down to contact. So as you can see, it'll count. So in this system, those bonds are going to help count towards the truck nades people's party. So the handing in that bounty to them will help them. So, I mean, that's pretty much everything you really need to know. Um, so for instance, if I went and I got that combat bond and then I went to another system that the people's party is in or in charge of, um, I'm not going to help the war in this system at all. So you want to pump influence into a faction in the system that you want them to grow in. You can't go to another system and pump influence into the faction and then expect positive things in another system. So just make sure you kind of, I mean, to, to make the right choices to be effective in, in background simulation, you, you, you wanna be able to understand everything in full. So for instance, if you wanna do bounties to help your faction but your faction isn't in charge of the station then you're not going to be helping your faction you might as well you, you you better take your bounties and hand them in at another station at a different station that has an interstellar factor so that you're not positively influencing your opponent faction it's kind of i mean at first it's kind of a big mess and it's a little bit complicated but if you Kind of just take point by point if you just go into the different states of the factions and understanding um what causes a boom what causes a bust and then what helps like knowing which faction is in control of a station and knowing what actions at that station are going to help or not help the faction that's in charge and then if you are not a faction in charge you got to understand the things you need to do in order to make the faction you're supporting so that it's now in charge and then once you become in control of a station then you want to make sure that you take the right actions to stay in control of the station and so it's just understanding what to do and what not to do um making sure you're because i've seen a lot of people really gung-ho and happy to help and but then they make the wrong decisions and they end up helping the enemy and it's kind of I mean, you can't even get mad at someone because they're there to help. They want to help. They're doing their best, but they didn't understand one little thing. So then they ended up helping the enemy. So it's kind of, it's kind of a, a hit and miss thing if you don't understand it. But if you do understand it, you can really become effective at kind of working the background simulation to your favor. So I hope this kind of helped. If there is anything that I missed or got wrong, just leave it down in the comments and we'll address it down there. And that's about it. So I hope everyone has a great day.